Have you ever wondered how a giant, heavy metal ship can float on water? It's like magic, right? Like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. But don't worry, I'm here to shed some light on the matter, where we'll be exploring the science of metal ships and their ability to float. From the grandiose Titanic to modern-day ocean liners, we'll dive deep into the physics and engineering behind this incredible feat. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the first to see our latest videos. Firstly, let's discuss the concept of buoyancy. Buoyancy is the force that enables an object to float in a fluid, which, in this case, is water. The force of buoyancy acts in the opposite direction to gravity, which is why objects float when they're less dense than the fluid they're in. But how does this apply to metal ships? After all, metal is denser than water, so it should sink, right? Well, not exactly. When a metal ship is placed in water, it displaces a certain amount of water equal to its weight. The weight of the water displaced is equal to the weight of the ship, which creates an upward force that counteracts the weight of the ship, allowing it to float. This is known as Archimedes' principle, named after the Greek mathematician who first discovered it. But that's not the end of the story. The shape and design of the ship also play a crucial role in its ability to float. Modern-day ships are designed with a rounded bottom, which increases their stability by reducing the amount of water displaced as they move through the water. Additionally, they have multiple compartments that can be sealed in case of damage, which prevents the ship from sinking. Another factor that contributes to a ship's ability to float is its weight distribution. The heavier the load, the lower the ship sits in the water, but there's a limit to how much weight a ship can carry without sinking. This is why modern-day ships undergo rigorous testing to ensure they can handle their intended cargo without compromising their safety. Now, let's talk about the Titanic. This infamous ship was considered unsinkable due to its size and luxurious design, but as we all know, it sank on its maiden voyage. One of the main reasons for the Titanic's tragic fate was its design. The ship had a double bottom, which made it heavier than it needed to be. Additionally, the compartments weren't watertight, which allowed water to flood the ship and caused it to sink. The Titanic's designers also underestimated the impact of hitting an iceberg, which caused damage to multiple compartments and ultimately led to the ship's sinking. However, the sinking of the Titanic was a turning point in shipbuilding history. It led to the development of new safety measures and regulations, such as watertight compartments, better lifeboats, and improved communication systems, to prevent such disasters from happening again. Moving forward in time, the science behind metal ships has continued to evolve, leading to the creation of even larger and more technologically advanced ships. One such example is the Oasis of the Seas, which is currently the largest cruise ship in the world. The Oasis of the Seas is made of metal and is able to float due to the principles of buoyancy and displacement. But what sets it apart is its design, which features a multi-hull construction that provides greater stability and reduces resistance as it moves through the water. Moreover, the Oasis of the Seas is equipped with the latest technology, such as computerized navigation systems, advanced propulsion systems, and environmental controls to minimize its impact on the ocean. In conclusion, the science behind metal ships and their ability to float is a complex topic that involves a combination of physics, engineering, and design. From the Titanic to modern-day ships, the lessons learned from past disasters have led to the creation of safer and more efficient ships. So, the next time you're on a cruise or simply watching ships pass by, remember the fascinating science that allows them to float on water. And just in case anyone asks, there's no such thing as floatium. That's it, we've reached the end of the video. If you made it this far, you're one of the best people out there. Before you go, make sure to give us a like to let us know you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions that pop into your head in the middle of the night, feel free to leave them in the comments below so we can answer them for you. 